Hello and welcome. You won't believe it, what will happen in this video. The results may shock you. Today I will try to find out, is it possible to run Windows Vista on a new modern Intel CPUs. Are you ready? Let's go. So this is the second video about installing Windows Vista on a new modern PC. In a previous video, I've tried to run Windows Vista on Intel i9-9900K and Z390 motherboard. Unfortunately, it failed. I had A5 error. If you haven't watched it, you can use the link in the description. In this video, I asked you to send me the correct SAP.sys file, which I thought was causing the error. And you did it. Thank you so much for this. I've tried about 5 versions of the file, but it failed too. Then I noticed this message from Bernardo. And he said, I don't have a SAP.sys file, but try Windows Vista Extended Kernel. What does that mean? Windows Vista Extended Kernel is a package of updated system files, mostly dynamic link libraries or DLLs, that allows you to run modern applications normally restricted to Windows 7 and above. So my thoughts were, maybe this is it, this is the key. I mean, if it can run modern applications, maybe it can run on Intel i9 9900K. So I select my Ventoy SSD and somehow it loaded successfully. What a miracle. I don't believe it. But it's too early to celebrate because we might have two problems. The first one, it just may not see the disks. The second, we may have problems with the drivers during the second stage of installation. And we have another issue. My keyboard and my mouse are not working at all. Looks like this happens because they are connected via USB 3.0 ports. Luckily, I have this old IBM keyboard that connects via PS2 port. And fortunately, our Z390 motherboard has this port too. Ok, go next. Let's see what will happen. And oh my god, look at this. Amazing, but somehow it shows all disks. Of course, except NVMe disks. Ok, we'll select my test SSD. The setup begins. Good luck. And we have the same error during the second stage of installation. Then I've tried to load in safe mode, but it failed. It's very strange, because how it can be successfully loaded in the first stage of installation and then crashed in the second with the same issue? Then I noticed that a sys file which is located in boot.vim, this is the first stage of installation, has a different version comparing to a sys which is located in install.vim file. This is the second stage of installation. So I've tried to replace a sys from boot.vim to a sys in install.vim. What if it works? First I had this error. I also tried to update the checksum, but then the same error appeared. I didn't stop there, because one of the users on WinRate forum leave me a link with the Ukrainian version of Windows Vista, which has updated as a bad at sys file. That's how it looks, and now my keyboard and my mouse are working well. Looks like this image has USB 3.0 drivers, which is really nice. But unfortunately, in the second stage of installation, it happened again. The same error. So that's all, this is the end? Of course not, because another one of my subscribers sent me this. The proof that Windows Vista can run on a modern Intel CPUs. This is Intel i3-12100. Goddamn, I don't get it. How it can be possible that Windows Vista doesn't run on Intel i9-9900K, but successfully loads on the 12th Intel generation? How it can be possible? Also, I found another proof. As you can see, Windows Vista is working properly on Intel i7-12700KF, and it has 32GB of RAM. Fortunately, I have only 9th Intel generation CPU, so I went to my old friend Sergey, which luckily have Intel i5-12400 CPU and 64GB of RAM on B660M motherboard. So, I've tried to load Windows Vista extended kernel in UFI mode, and this happens. It just stuck. And now I think this is the end. It looks like it's impossible to run Windows Vista on a modern PC. And then I get an idea. We have 64 gigabytes of RAM. Maybe Windows Vista is just not ready for this. So I removed one RAM stick 
and left only 32 gigabytes of RAM. Let's see what will happen. And oh my god, it loaded successfully. Yeah! Incredible. Okay, it's early to celebrate, because this is only the first stage of installation. We must get to the second. Selecting my test SSD, and the setup begins. And the moment of truth. And oh my god, it's working. I can't believe it. It happened. Type your name. And yes, welcome to Windows Vista. I'm sure Windows Vista Ultimate can support more than 32 GB of RAM. And yes, as you can see, it can support 128 GB. So let's plug the RAM stick back and see what will happen. And nice, as you can see, it works well with 64 GB of RAM. Great. I know you have some questions. I mean, how it can be possible? Windows Vista cannot run on Intel i9-9900K, but somehow it works properly on Intel 12th generation CPU. And here is the answer. It's called the clock circuits or drift issues. This issue can be seen on Haswell 4th generation through Tiger Lake 11th generation. Maybe that's why it won't run on Intel i9-9900K, but it works well on Intel 12th generation. I'm sure some of you have more detailed information about this issue, so please leave a comment and explain to us how it works. I will pin this comment. Ok, go next, what about drivers? As you can see, it has many unknown devices. Our motherboard has only drivers for Windows 10. There are no drivers for Windows Vista, so I've tried to install them manually. Most of them were installed successfully, except the LAN driver. And the reason is we have Intel Network Adapter, which has drivers only for Windows 10. It's not a big deal, because we can connect an old network adapter, and it will work fine. First of all, I connected an old video card, NVIDIA GTS 8400, to check how old games work on a modern CPU. Next, I will try to connect a modern video card, GTX 1080, and try to run GTA 5, for example. Ok, let's check Windows Vista rating. And we have 5.9 score. This is the maximum value. Ok, let's open CPU Z and see what we have. As you can see, it has only 2.5 GHz, but the max frequency must be 4.4 GHz. Looks like the turbo is not working here. Let's run benchmark. And we have 5300 points. What if I will compare it with Pentium 166? The difference is large. The system is working very fast. Let's check about Windows, and we have Windows Vista with extended kernel. And look at the CIS file, it has the same version, which it was in the first images I was trying to install. If you were watching one of my previous videos about installing Windows XP on a modern PC, you may remember that because of huge amount of FPS, the game mechanics was changed. So let's check how it will work here. Let's try to run Doom 3. I also installed MSI Afterburner to see how many FPS we will have. It works fine, we have around 30 FPS. Ok, next, let's try to run Dead Space. It's working well, we have 60 FPS. No issues. Let's go ahead, and let's try to run Painkiller. We have 100 FPS. And fortunately, we don't have any issues with game mechanics, like it was on Intel i9-9900K. And of course, let's try to run Half-Life Uplink. And the error message appears. Not enough memory. No problem, all we need is to set compatibility. We have 60 FPS, looks like vertical sync is turned on. It was open gel mode, let's try software mode. It works great. Ok, now we'll try to connect a modern video card, GTX 1080. Let's see what will happen. And we have a problem. As you can see, there are no drivers for Windows Vista. But fortunately, on one side, I found them. It's not official, but we shall try. But it crashed. I've tried different Windows Vista images, but it failed. So, is it possible to run Windows Vista on modern Intel CPUs? The answer is yes. But in most cases, you won't succeed with that. Especially on Intel 4th through 11th generation CPUs. So maybe Windows Vista was not so bad. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. See you later. Bye.